Hello and welcome to the course where I'm going to guide you through the certifications from Amazon AWS. So I'm assuming that you have no knowledge at all about cloud computing. You're just starting. You are a completely beginner, but you are lost on certifications, providers, cloud providers, and so on. So right now on this course, I'm going to teach you how to identify and choose the best path for your career. So if you go for Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure, even Google Cloud, I'm going to show you step by step which certifications are for what career and where you can start. So let's go for the first class. Okay, just to make sure we are on the same page, the objective of this course is make sure you understand the path and career of Amazon AWS certifications, okay? So I'm not gonna talk a lot about Google or either Azure, Microsoft Azure. Our focus over here in this course is make sure you understand the first certification you should get on Amazon uh, AWS Cloud, the second certification, the third certification, how many questions, uh, exam, how much you're gonna pay for the exam, uh, how long do you have to uh, make the exam and, and get the questions right and get approved? How many points do you need to be approved? So every single detail and information regarding the AWS certifications will be here in this course. So let's go. Let's move on. Okay, now we have the question, what is cloud or what is cloud computing? So assuming that you are brand new on cloud computing, you don't know, you never done any course, or you never work with cloud computing. Let's go for the simple way to explain this. So cloud computing is the on-demand delivery services of IT resources over the internet. So in old days, or I would say companies are still using that, but we have a company here, and the company has a specific uh, space inside of the company. And this space we call as a server room. And inside of the server room, you have your switches, you have your routers, and also your servers. I will say as a DAO in here. So you have your servers, so you have your database server, you have your, your web, uh, host server and uh, you host some business applications in here as well. The problem with this uh, layout is you have to maintain these devices in a very uh, secure way. You have to also to uh, cool down these devices and uh, maintain the, especially the power. So instead of that, you have the cloud computing. And cloud computing is basically a company, as we we use in here as example, Amazon AWS. It's a company that instead of you buying and owning and maintain physical data centers and servers, you can access the technology services inside. So we're gonna call it as a services. And uh, you're gonna access these technology services inside, such as, a, let's say you want a, a, a virtual machine. On AWS, we call it as a EC2. You want a database, we have a database in here. So you can access these devices uh, for storage, for database, for EC2, as you need, and you pay as you need as well. But this whole infrastructure, it's not in your uh, or close to your company. Maybe it's close to your company, but it's not under your management. So the company manages everything. They make sure it's a security environment. They make sure it's a, a, a nice, cool and dry environment for the servers and the, and the network devices. They make sure you have power and you have redundant power. You have like... Um, uh, 
power supplies and uh, redundant power supplies, so everything. So if your company is here, you can either access your server room, which is very costly, or you can access the cloud computing uh, service, on this case AWS, for a little bit less price. And of course, there are some more advantages. And uh, actually, on the next class, I'm going to show you the top five advantages of cloud computing. So that's it for now, and I'll see you on the next class. Okay, let's go for the top five reasons you or your company, your company you're working for, should go for cloud if you're not already there. So, but before that, let me just say this. Today, 90% of the companies in US, of the business in US, are using a minimum of one cloud service. And uh, I don't know about you, but you have, have you ever wonder why so many businesses are moving towards your cloud and I believe the answer are the big advantages the cloud brings to any kind of business improving the cash flow improving the efficiency and uh, there are so many other factors so let's go for the first one the number one is less cost so less cost the services are free from what we call capital expenditure. What does that mean? You don't have to pay anything in advance. Of course, if you pay some contracts in advance, you can get for less price. But normally, if you go for AWS account and you open an account, you can start spinning uh, instances, Windows instances, uh, Linux instances uh, straight away and you don't have to pay anything in advance. Of course, the bill is going to come at the end of the month, but not advance, not, 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 you don't have to put the money first. So use the service first. So there are no huge costs in hardware in cloud computing. And uh, basically, you have to pay just to operate the business as a subscription plan. That means you use the service and at the end of the month you get your bill and uh, this bill will go back normally 30 days if i can write days 30 days and the second top reason and i like this one the second one is the 24 by 7 availability avail what does that mean? You have a flexible and uh, easy way to turn on and off your devices. But if you leave the device on for the 30 days, normally most of the companies will guarantee 99.9% .9 of uh, uptime. So the uptime in cloud is it really it it is really unbelievable, and the workers they can get onto any application they need from anywhere. Some some of the applications also uh, has the function offline, so you can have the service, but the worker is not online right now. They can still use in the service. So basically. Uh, 24 by 7 availability if you spin up a server I would say let's say a file server these files will be available uh, throughout the year with 99.9% .9 uptime which is a great great advantage and the third one third one flexibility flexibility in capacity what does that mean uh, if you go back a few years when you have your data center actually today most of the companies still have the data centers yeah but because we had no option of cloud uh, you must have your server in there and uh, when you buy your server let's say you buy your your Dell server you buy that with a 8 gig memory and you buy that with a disk of uh, one one terabyte for example yeah so flexibility in capacity means what 
if you host your application, your website in the cloud, and uh, you have a certain amount of traffic, if that traffic increases, that means you have to increase the capacity of your server. So to increase the capacity of server in your structure, you have actually to power off the server, put some more memory, let's say 16 gig in here, two terabytes in here, and then power on the server. So that means downtime. In the cloud, you just have, uh, I would say, let's say, for example, you have a solution called Auto Scale. Auto Scale. And the Auto Scale, uh, what the Auto Scale does is when you reach, I would say, 80% of your capacity, it will scale up the memory, the process, the CPU. It will scale the actual environment to provide uh, more resources to the traffic they're receiving. And when the traffic goes down, it will auto scale down as well to less machines. So let's say you started with one server and then you get a traffic, you go for the second server, you go for the third server, all in an auto scale mode. If the traffic goes down, the application will, the platform will kill the, sec the third server and then will kill the second server, staying with one server so you can uh, still saving money with that. So flexibility in capacity. Uh, I didn't put as a number one because cost, it is one of the biggest advantage, but this one is, it's killing. And now let's move for the fourth one. And the fourth one is security. So security, cloud computing uh, do offer a great uh, level of security when you have a sensitive data or you have a sensitive uh, data loss. So let's say this, if you have a server and this server is faced to the internet, especially in AWS, you have a service called security group. And on this security group, you can say, okay, just this IP address can access the specific server and uh, they, will be, they will be able to access on the port 3389. So this is a kind of security. Nobody else in the entire world can access that. And, uh, and you may think, okay, but how, how good is the security level from the provider if I upload my sensitive files. So how do I know if the provider, on this case, the AWS, it's not seeing the files or the files are uh, really secure. So think about that. One of the biggest customers of AWS, not one of the biggest, but the, the customers that we know are Netflix, Netflix, uh, NASA, the US government, of course, they have a, a special network for them, but those are big customers. They have a, a lots of like Stripe, uh, uh, PayPal is using as well. So those are financial institutions. So they do care a lot about the security and AWS can provide uh, with the best technology and with the best solutions uh, in regarding of security. And the Fifth one, the last one, but not least, is easy management. Easy management. So every single provider, either AWS or Google Cloud or uh, Microsoft Azure, they do provide a very extensive and easy to use platform. From that platform, you can spin up a database or a web server. You can see how much you're spending on each one. So I would say the how hard it is to manage a network in the cloud, I would say it's from zero to 10, I would say it's around five, yeah? So it's not that hard. Of course, if you go for the uh, more high level services, you need a, a training, you need to understand how the technology works. But basically, uh, if you want to from now 
open an account on AWS and uh, start one EC2 instance, which is a VM, you can do that in under 10 minutes. And in under 10 minutes, you'll be able to access this VM uh, easily from the AWS cloud. So those are the top five advantages and, uh, and features and uh, reasons why you or your company should go for cloud computing. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, it's time to talk about the AWS certification path. So I wanna make sure you have a full understanding of how the AWS certifications do work. So for that, we have this class. So basically there are two paths. The first one is the, uh, we call role base, role base path. And uh, the second path as we call as a solutions, solutions path both these paths together they have at least 11 categories of certification so let's say i will cover just a few over here because there are many and uh, i'm gonna make sure i leave the link on the uh, resources of this class so you can click on the link and check uh, even for the latest ones or the ones I'm mentioning over here. So let's go for the role base. The inside of the role base, you can go for the cloud practitioner. Uh, sorry, I'm missing a C in here. Pra practitioner. This is the, most people say this is the first step, but I'm not agreeing with that because depends what kind of path you're going. If you're going for the architect or if you're going for the developer or if you're going for the operation. So AWS has a, a very clever way to split the path and make sure you join the right one. So, but Cloud Protectioner, it is the, uh, it's one path. And uh, over here, you can learn the cloud uh, fundamentals, you can learn um, how we are looking to build and validate the overall understanding of the AWS cloud. You're gonna learn so about the, the actual platform. And um, if you're working for uh, management sales or purchasing or financial roles, this is the path that you're gonna take. So if you buying the sorry, if you buying solutions in the cloud or reselling solutions in the cloud, uh, cloud practitioner, it is the path you should go. So the second one, the next one where I am certified as well, is the architect. So the architect path is where you can learn the to design a highly available system. So over here, you're gonna learn sobre, about EC2, you're gonna learn about uh, databases, uh, the, let's say the design, the designing overall. So this is the architect uh, path. If you go for the developer, developer path, here is where you learn about applications in the cloud. So how to, automate and make sure the applications are running on the services of AWS, for example. Uh, the next one is the operations. Operations, you will learn how to automate applications, networks and systems. And the last one on my list, but it's not the last one available, it's just on my list, is the one, the DevOps. So those are the most common paths in today's uh, cloud certification. And the DevOps is where you learn, the DevOps engineer is where you learn to design and deploy and manage uh, the AWS cloud. So it's kind of a uh, architect and uh, developer in, in one single certification. So for the next class, I'm gonna deep dive on the cloud practitioner uh, the architect and uh, and the developer. So I'm gonna show you how many uh, courses and also how many exams and uh, how the exam looks like in details of each one of these paths. So I'll see you in the next class. 
Okay, so if you are looking to learn just the basic fundamentals and best practices of cloud computing, I believe, in my opinion, the certification you are looking for is the Cloud Practitioner. That's the one. This is the exam you should take, in my opinion. So let's have a look on the Cloud Practitioner and uh, check it out the exam. So if you go to this URL, where I'm going to leave on the um, on the section of uh, help help section of the this class, you go for the Cloud Practitioner and click on Explore this path. You see, there are only there is only one certification, which is the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. So, with this certification, you will understand uh, the technical and the management uh, services that AWS has on its platform. So, the exam. Let's have a look at the exam over here. The exam is composed of 90 minutes, multiple choice questions, and uh, multiple answer questions as well. Um, the delivery method is also test center or online proctored exam. So you can choose uh, you can choose between one of these two. 90 minutes, and uh, of course, it's way uh, cheaper than the other ones. It's only only a hundred dollars for that. So this course can be scheduled via the AWS website, clicking on this button in here. And if you're looking just to start like the beginner, beginning of everything, Cloud Practitioner is your exam. Okay, let's move to the next one. Okay, let's have a look now on the architect path. So on the On the architect path and this path basically has two exams so to make sure we are on the same page and uh, I'm getting informations uh, from the AWS website this is the link I'm using so I'm just gonna copy and paste this link to the uh, course resources on this classroom and basically we are looking on the AWS solutions architect so if you click down here on the explore this path and uh, I don't know when are you watching these videos but right now this is the layout that uh, uh, Amazon AWS is using for the certification they love to change that so every single week when you come back here is a different icons different colors but basically the path is still the same so please forgive me if you are uh, checking another page with a different colors but the information is still the same so if I click on the explore path you can see the path AWS draw but basically you do have two certifications here the first one is the associate level and the second one is the professional level the the name of the certification is the AWS Certified Solutions Architect and uh, we split in two parts, Associate and Professional. If I go down here on the recommended progression, click on the plus sign and uh, I can open both exams. The first exam, the Associate and the second one, the Professional. So if you go for the Associate exam, you're going to have um, uh, uh, questions as a uh, multiple choice and multiple answer. This is the associate type Delivery method is via test center So you can go to a Pearson view test center for example and do your exam You can book on Pearson view website as well. You will have 130 minutes to uh, To finish the exam and uh, 150 dollars as a cost and during the exam, basically, you can have you have from uh, zero to one thousand points, where you need at least seven hundred points to uh, to be approved on this specific exam. Okay, um, let's go back here. Language you can do in English, Japanese, Korean, and uh, simplified Chinese. You can schedule the exam straight from the AWS website 
or you can go to the Pearson View website. So this is the associated level. Let's just go back and uh, have a look at the professional. So the professional is when you want to go deep on the uh, architect section of the AWS cloud. So I would say I did both certifications and on the first one, uh, you learn about EC2, you learn uh, regarding uh, databases, but you don't go very deep on each one. The professional, you will go very deep on each topic that you learn on the Arch Solutions Architect, plus a few uh, new ones. So AWS uh, do suggest that you have at least two years or more uh, of experience hands-on, but we know in reality that's not uh, possible or actually that's not feasible because if you if you are starting you're going for the certification first and then you're going to start working in in a company so uh, if you are lucky enough to work in a company that uh, do provide or work with AWS that's another story but basically we first do the certification and then we go for the for the hands-on experience so the professional exam is a little bit more expensive uh, is around $300. You have 170 minutes. Uh, you have more questions uh, on the associate exam. You have between 40 to 60 questions on the professional exam. You have around 60 questions and uh, the practice exam, which is the mock lab from AWS costs $40. So if you want to make sure you are good to go on the exam, I would recommend to do the practice as well. And of course, a course, yeah? If you don't do any single course, either for the associate or professional, your chances to to uh, to get approved in one of these exams are, are very low. So choose wisely uh, the best course and uh, and move on in your career. Uh, this, this exam can be scheduled as well via the AWS website or Pearson View. So basically, this is the path for uh, solutions architect where you can have the associate and then the professional when you reach the professional you are uh, a top professional on on the architect section that's it for this class let's move on to the next one okay with the AWS certification path you can also go for the developer one and developer it's something that you're going to learn how to develop applications, especially for the cloud. So you're going to work with Lambda, with serverless applications and so on and so forth. Uh, most people think they do need uh, a, a deep understanding about coding, but you don't. You can learn as, uh, as you go through the developer course as well. But if you do have experience coding, of course, it's uh, it's way better. It's an advantage for you, okay? So let's go back to the AWS website. Let's click on the developer, explore this path, and uh, you see that one certification AWS, which is the AWS Certified Developer Associate. So if we click down here on the plus button, you see the certification is a big one. The exam is 130 minutes, multiple choice questions and multiple answers as well. Nivo associated and uh, that will cost you $150, okay? So this certification can also be scheduled and booked for, uh, through the AWS website or via the Pearson View website as well. So. If you do coding and uh, if you want to code uh, as an application for cloud, uh, understand how Lambda works and uh, CI and CDI pipelines and stuff like that, the AWS developer path is your path, is the right path for you. Okay, let's go for the next class. Okay, we are back and I believe you do have a, um, a little bit deeper understanding about the certifications and especially the architect, developer and cloud practitioner. And now here is the big question, yeah? Uh, where should I start? So the starting point. Where is my starting point? Where should I start and which certifications 
uh, should I take first, second, third, and so on and so forth. So in my opinion, and uh, maybe if you ask another engineer, they will give you another answer. So let's say if you ask like 10 engineers, they will probably gonna give you like five, six different answers. So this one is in my opinion, what I see in the market, what I've been working with is that. Uh, if you are a completely beginner, which I'm assuming you are, yeah, you start on the practitioner. Why? Because the practitioner will give you the basic level, the basic understanding uh, of services inside of AWS. So with that, you can move forward to the next level. The next level, I will also recommend the solutions architect. Why is that? With the solutions architect, you're going to learn how to design high available systems with the solutions that AWS do provide. So you will learn how to uh, build and uh, spin uh, AWS EC2 instances with auto scale, you're going to learn about VPCs, you're going to learn about subnets, and uh, also if you go to the database section, you're going to learn how MariaDB works, how to build a, a database, and so on and so forth. So from the Solutions Architect, which is a great certification, you can, you can uh, position yourself in the market, you can looking for a job or, or I don't know, uh, change uh, paths inside of the company that you're working with. So you say, let's say you, you're working on networks or you're working on Windows infrastructure, you move to the cloud infrastructure. So with this certification, doors uh, will be open to you. I, I, I'm 100% sure of that. So from there, either you go to the professional professional architect so let's say you love it the the, the architect part and uh, and you want to move to that you want to go deeper you want to get to the next level uh, and of course you're gonna be on the next level especially financially speaking yeah because uh, the the salary the the wage the average in on the on the professional one is way higher than the than on the architect but let's say now I, I really appreciate the solutions architect, but I want to go for coding. So if you want to go for coding, I will recommend the developer one. So from the developer, you can go to, I would say you can go to the DevOps. Okay. You can go to the DevOps and uh, from the professional architect, if you want to keep carry on, you can go for the operations. And so on. As I said, this is my opinion. Is what I see in the market. What I see the guys working in the uh, major corporations. And uh, if you can follow that, as soon as you pass the practitioner exam, start on the next day. The solutions architect. From the solutions architect, you should be able to decide if you do like the architect section or you want to go for the developer. If you like the developer, go for the developer and then go to the DevOps and uh, you have data scientists, you have machine learning later on. So you have a, a, a variety of, of options to choose after that. But please don't jump any, any especially these first two. The first one in here and the second don't jump any one of these otherwise you're gonna get in trouble on these these two ones because they are way they are way deeper uh, way more complex and uh, and uh, the exams are way harder to pass as well okay so this is on my opinion and uh, if you have any comment please let me know and uh, I'll see you in the next lecture